Okay, I'm here with Serge Beck, the CEO of Optherium. And uh, Serge, thank you for joining us. I know you've got a super, super packed schedule. Thank you. It's, it's my pleasure to be here. Great. So, we're, Serge, we're going to dedicate this segment to the financial tech community, the banking community, uh, and the overall monetary. We're going to talk about some monetary policy as well, uh, and we'd we'll love the opportunity to be able to to pick your brain. So, let's let's start first with um, the current problems that are happening right now within the banking sector. Well, the uh, banking sector is suffering with tremendous uh, uh, different different angles of the problems uh, right now facing from the fraudulent using of the uh, uh, credit cards and debit cards, as well as the uh, biometrics verification. They have a huge problem storage uh, of the uh, sensitive data, and um, as well as the transactions, uh, uh, wire transfers, high fees, uh, and, and slow wire transfers international. So the banks has a lot of different problems, domestic and international banks. And do you find that the either the regulators or the banking community are a aware on how severe these problems are, and if so, what are they doing to deal with it? Well, they're absolutely aware of it, and there is not much they can do about the fraudulent activities, about the, using a SWIFT for international wire transfers and uh, for uh, storing sensitive data any other way rather than just a traditional uh, uh, storing of data and being the, uh, targeted by the hackers. So there's not much they can do at this point. And um, uh, hopefully the new technology that's coming up right now uh, as a big wave of uh, blockchain technology will uh, absolutely change this uh, structure completely in, in, in different different direction. So why don't the banks, um, instead of relying on smaller companies and innovators to be able to build these products or build these solutions, why don't they just do it in-house? Well, the, the first oh. of all, bank, banks, the, their business is, is, is financial business. They're not, business uh, they're not in the business of developing software. And in order to get someone who's uh, high-tech at this point, uh, for the technologies, uh, like a, a blockchain technology, it's very difficult to find someone who really knows what, what they're doing. There's no books written about the blockchains. There is no information out there. Uh, and, and for banks, it's a tremendous risk to build something that they don't know what, uh, uh, what will be the result of it. So they, for banks, it's a lot easier to, to buy existing application, to buy a license for existing structure. Uh, rather than getting involved into developing something new, that's at a high risk of approach, and, and banks uh, would hesitate to do that. So it sounds like that creates opportunities for for smaller companies and innovators to be able to play in the financial tech space. So, so then let's talk about your company and how they're dealing with these issues. Well, uh, we are a fintech, global fintech companies, over seven countries involved in developing our products. We have over 35 people working on a project worldwide, and we're hiring more more people, more, more, more uh, talented uh, uh, guys, developers, and, and business analysts. Uh, we have a solution for banks. We have a tremendous solution for banks. Uh, we have different products for banks that we can offer in new technology. Uh, I would like to talk to uh, many different uh, topics regarding the how we will be able to uh, provide a solution for banks. But uh, uh, the major major issue banks right now are facing is they moving from uh, credit cards towards the biometric verification of the transactions. Um, that is it's very interesting that's that's cool but the problem is the banks still saving all those information sensitive information in centralized servers old-fashioned way which makes them targeted as a as, as very easy target for uh, for hackers to hack into the system and steal precious information such as biometric yeah and it kind of makes sense because I mean these legacy systems that uh, that are in place right now with the banks that they've been they've been there for thirty years. Like they're still a lot of them are still working off a of cobalt. So, you know, to to 
solidify your, your point and to add a lot of credibility to it, it's, now I get that they need to rely on smaller companies and innovators to be able to create these solutions. Um, yeah, but they, they're but very carefully also. They're very careful also. They would watch how this new technology is going to prove itself and who's coming in first into the uh, into the new technology into blockchain they, they're very careful depending on the size of the banks depending how uh, innovative bank is uh, but uh, eventually all banks will be there that's for sure and so so it's just a it sounds like what you're saying it's just a question of time absolutely it's just a matter of time all banks will be in the blockchain decentralized world there is no other uh, uh, options for that. And uh, to confirm my words, uh, GDPR, which is the Global Data Protection Regulation, requires enterprises to store in decentralized fashion a data and have a separate different options for user as well as the uh, enterprises to do certain functionality which existing system does not allow to do. So uh, blockchain technology is, is, is a solution, is a perfect solution. And our company, Apterium uh, Labs, providing solution of storing information with GDPR compliant uh, format. And uh, we will license out our technology to banks to uh, be compliant with GDPR new law that came out a few months ago. Uh, in addition to that, that covers as well storing in decentralized fashion all biometrics of sensitive information of users. Well, listen, if someone breaks in into the bank and stealing credit card, that's one issue. If someone breaks in and stealing uh, uh, biometrics of people, that's that's the problem. That's a huge problem. So uh, uh, an information has been uh, uh, exposed, the biometric has been exposed. So in, in a situation with credit card, they can just change the number and, and just stop the credit card and disregard. But the, with uh, uh, biometrics, it's not possible to do that. So it's, it's a huge problem banks are facing right now. So we are a solution. We have a solution, perfect solution for GDPR compliance, for storing biometric data in our patented technology, uh, uh, private blockchain, uh, decentralized, multi-decentralized private blockchains network. That's patented technology, which we will uh, present in Amsterdam, uh, June 27 and June 28 in Amsterdam trade show, one of the largest trade show in Europe. Over 8,000 people uh, expected to attend a, a trade show. So I will be uh, speaking 20 minutes on the stage and I will be presenting our ecosystem along with all products that we're offering to banks, ex uh, exchanges, and, and brokerage and insurance companies. Incredible. How many people are expected at this conference, Serge? Uh, we are over 8,000. They're saying over 8,000 is the largest European a blockchain uh, fintech uh, a trade show in 2018. So it's going to be a tremendous number of people. And without divulging, uh, we hear that there's going to be a very interesting announcement coming out from uh, from Ethereum. Absolutely. Uh, we're going to announce that we're doing the strategic partnership with one of the biometric company. Uh, it's international, worldwide, largest uh, biometric company. And uh, I will not be able to uh, release any information at this point, but I will do announcement uh at the uh, Amsterdam trade, uh, an Amsterdam trade show. Great, and and final question, Serge. Biomet. The term biometrics has been a uh, has been a very big uh, buzzword right now. And obviously, you being a leading expert in the space, can you break down and explain what biometrics are? Well, uh, uh, there is a very primitive version of biometrics and very sophisticated version of biometrics. What, what we're dealing with in Aptherium, we are, uh, have a patented technology, dynamic biometrics, which not only dealing with the uh, specimen of the face, but we are, have multiple verification of moving in motion, uh, talking, voice, secret word, as well as the fingerprint, and as well as the uh, uh, face in motion. So there is no an issue having a, a photograph uh, 
uh, uh, having the photograph and trying to unlock an application using photograph and biometrics. So we are dealing with 3D, 3D uh, dynamic movement of the face, voice and secret word, all those specimens being verified independently and separately uh, for every transaction. Uh, and then, of course, very primitive, which is the what we're seeing right now with Apple. That's a very simple version of the biometric. Sure. And CNN came out with a story uh, this morning, actually, um, that basically made the statement that passwords uh, are a thing of the future. Would you agree with that? Uh, no. No, I, I do not agree. Passwords are a thing of the future. Uh, in our company, in Aptherium, uh, we're setting up a modules where you don't need to have any password. You don't even need any, any kind of a document to verify identity. Uh, with uh, biometrics, uh, with Aptherium biometrics, you will be able to verify your identity at any location in any institution worldwide. And you will just say, I don't have a passport, but I do have a Aptherium verification. And you can verify my identity through Aptherium. So that kind of uh, uh, that kind of the solid, legitimate uh, uh, foundation we're putting into the uh, blockchain technology to verify uh, uh, people's identity, in addition to any kind of the transactions that we're doing for purchasing and exchanging uh, digital assets and using biometrics, that uh, separate. So we are we're able to uh, connect biometric verification with the transactions of the financial transactions of purchase or exchanging the digital assets. So that's that's exciting stuff we're doing. That's great. So, so we're saying uh, passwords are a thing of the past and that we're moving towards biometrics and other forms of verification. Absolutely. Absolutely. The password, uh, there's, a, there's a quantum machines that can break any password. And uh, uh, biometrics is something that is, is not being uh, uh, is not being exhausted at this point, it's not being uh, used that, that much, and um, it's a little bit different from the logic of, of the password. And I think biometrics, using the voice recognition, uh, a face specimen, and uh, uh, a special words, as well as the fingerprints, and the, we have over eight different uh, levels of the security with our uh, multi-secure technology patent that pending right now that verifies identity of the person and you don't need any password. Incredible. To remember, especially Incredible. to remember, you don't have to remember a password. Incredible. So what um, what are some of the key components of your company, Ethereum Labs, that make the company special and unique? Well, uh, we're solving three major problems right now in, in blockchain technology. As everybody knows, technology is very interesting, but it's not useful at this point. It's very slow. I'm talking about public blockchain. I'm talking about private blockchain. It's, it's very immature. Uh, it's very slow. It's not secure. And um, it has no usability at all. We, we can see all the digital uh, tokens, cryptocurrencies going here and there, but in real life, you can't use it. So Ethereum has uh, um, solved all those problems. We have a solution for all those problems. Three major problems Ethereum solved, speed, security, and usability. So those are the three major things that we will be, be, be able to, to resolve. So that's the major thing that will have been achieved. Phenomenal. Well, we're almost at the end of time, Serge, and I know you're super busy. So thank you very much for your time. And we look forward to the next segment and speaking with you next week. Thank you. I wish everyone synergy of blockchain solutions. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye.